Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to module 3 of the course Time Dependent Quantum Chemistry. We have been uh, discussing uh, how to represent a particle in quantum mechanics and we have seen that the wave packet is the correct representation of a particle in quantum mechanics and uh, uh, in terms of wave packet we have got an analytical approach to, to solve the dynamics of a uh, wave packet um, and uh, for that first thing we need is that the initial wave packet has to be um, uh, has to be known to find out how that known wave packet will move forward or in other words how the particle will evolve. So, it is more like I if I start with if I start with a Gaussian wave packet then at different time it may so happen that it is moving but at the same time is broadening when the particle is moving which means that the shape of the particle is changing while it is moving while it is freely moving and, uh, and uh, that is something which we are going to now prove that what will happen with this analytical approach. So, as we have mentioned before at t equals 0 I have to make a good gauge for the wave packet and here I have considered a normalized stationary Gaussian wave packet. So, we are first looking at the stationary Gaussian wave packet where I do not use e to the power i k x part. This I remove. So, then the particle will be represented by this Gaussian function which looks like this is just a Gaussian function which is centered at x equals 0. There is no fast oscillation because oscillation comes because of this e to the power i k x term. This term is missing and that is why it is representing stationary Gaussian function. Why it is stationary Gaussian function is not um, it is stationary Gaussian function because of that missing part that uh, plane wave part here. And we have taken a normalized Gaussian function that is also a requirement we have to always begin with a normalized function in quantum dynamics. So, this is called normalized normalized stationary Gaussian function and then this is the final form of the Gaussian uh, final form of the wave packet at different time I will be able to find out. So, if I know at t equals 0 time what I have I will be able to find out at t equals any time any, any later time I will be able to find out what is what would be the typical shape of the wave function. So, for that I need to know a k and we have seen that a k a k can be calculated from this a k equals 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity x 0 e to the power minus i k x d x where the 
this initial wave packet is given by this. So, I have to find out a k then we have to plug that in here I will be able to get the final form of the wave packet analytical form of the wave packet and I will be able to get the time evolution how wave packet is evolving as a function of time or in other words how the particle is um, evolving its shape is changing where it is going every information will be able to get that. So, let us get this integration done first. So, if I plug that in here is going to be 1 by 2 pi then 2 a by pi to the power 1 by 4 then minus infinity to plus infinity integration e to the power minus a x square plus minus i k x then d x and standard Gaussian integral I have uh, shown it before then and that is very useful. So, we will use this standard Gaussian integral here and I get 1 by 2 pi 2 a by pi to the power 1 by 4 and this integral gives me pi by a e to the power minus k square by 4 a. So, our task is to plug that in here and in that case I will get 1 by 2 pi 2 a by pi to the power 1 by 4 pi by a e to the power minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus k square by 4 a e to the power minus e to the power i k x minus e t y h cut d k where e is the kinetic energy given by h cut square k square by 2 m. I will rearrange this one so that I can use the standard Gaussian integral. minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power I will rearrange in this following way minus 1 by 4 a plus i h cut t by 2 m this k square plus i x k d k here I have inserted this e value. So, so this part is inserted that is why I get this k square part and this k square part is taken out and I get i h cut t by 2 m. So, now I have got the standard integral Gaussian integral which can be now written as 2 a by pi to the power 1 by 4 pi by a and this integration is going to be pi by 1 by 4 a plus i i h cut t by 2 m into e to the power minus x square divided by 
फोर वन बाई फोर ए प्लस आई एच का टी बाई टू एम सो दिस दिस पार्ट माइनस एक्स स्क्वायर बाय फोर इनटू वन बाय फोर ए प्लस आई एच का टी बाय टू एम दिस कैन बी रिटेन एस एक्स स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय वन प्लस टू आई एच का टी ए बाय एम we can write down this way so if we can write down i'll be able to write down this psi wave packet xt i get the analytical form for that and that's going to be i just simplify the entire expression as 2a by pi to the power 1 by 4 Square root of one by one plus two i h cut t a by m e to the power minus a x square divided by one plus two i h cut t a by m that's the final expression for the the wave packet stationary wave packet at any time t and uh, uh finally we are interested in density because that's that can be connected to the uh experiment so we'll get the density also and for getting the density what we'll do we in the previous here this two this part 2i uh, not this part uh, we'll assume that this 2 h cut t a By m equals b. So this part can be represented in terms of b. This part also can be represented in terms of b, and that's the representation we have. If we represent it, then we get this is the wave function where b equals this. No, this this is this is density, so we we haven't reached there yet. So first we have to uh, represent in terms of b. So we'll represent it wave function. Uh, this wave function in terms of b psi wave packet x t equals two a by pi to the power one by four square root of one by One plus i b e to the power minus a x square divided by one plus i b. So the density is going to be absolute value square equals two a by pi to the power half. Square root of one by one plus i b into one minus i b. That's the complex conjugate e to the power. So this is nothing but psi star psi. So we have to multiply by its complex conjugate. So we can find out the complex conjugate form of this equation of this expression and then multiply with its own. So 
e to the power this is going to be e to the power minus a x square by 1 plus i b into e to the power minus a x square by 1 minus i b. This is the final web packet form and if I if I simplify this I get 2a by pi to the power half square root of 1 by 1 plus b square e to the power minus 2a x square by 1 plus b square. So, we get this expression. So, what we have presented is that this is the density um, uh, probability density distribution of that particle at t equals uh, any time later time and initial density distribution was this. So, this is the two different expressions we have for different time this is the initial time and this was the final this was the initial time and this was the final time the density distribution. One thing is quite clear from here is that if I start with a Gaussian web packet a particle which is represented by a Gaussian web packet if I start with this a Gaussian web packet this was at t equals 0 this is Gaussian we see that after even many times when the particle has propagated it is still remaining to be Gaussian. There are some changes going on we have to find out what kind of changes but still this form e to the power minus something multiplied by x square form is still maintained. So, it is still a Gaussian function. So, good thing about this is that an initial stationary Gaussian free particle web packet remains Gaussian when it is allowed to time evolve freely. It will maintain that uh, the, the, the Gaussian form even after certain time. So, next what we will do? we will try to understand what are the changes we will expect for that Gaussian. For that we will find out the, the width of the Gaussian. So, I started with this which is centered at x equals 0 and the wave function this was the density maximum is 2a by pi to the power half and initial width was delta x naught that was the initial width let us say at t equals 0 we had an initial width of the Gaussian delta x naught and delta x naught is defined as the delta x naught is the full width at half max of half maximum of the Gaussian pr 
probability density profile. It is not the wave function, it is the probability density full with half max, we have to remember that. It is not the wave function full with half max, it is not that. It is the full with half max of the um, density profile and if it is so, then I can find out this A value because by definition it is going to be half full width at half maximum. So, half of its maximum value that is 2a by pi 1 by half it occurs when the function takes the value this function takes the value when x equals delta x naught by 2. So, I get um, e to the power minus 2a delta x naught square by 4. Or I can get minus 2a delta x naught divided by 2 whole square equals ln 1 minus ln 2. Or I can write down a equals 2 ln 2 by delta x naught square. I get the a value. Why I need this a value? Because I have to then plug that in here so that I can get the final expression for uh, for the later time. What is going on at the later time? For the later time here I will do the same thing. This profile can be plotted. Let us say this profile is something like this which is centered again x, x equals 0 and it is width I will call it delta x t because at time t it is width and I will compare with it is width which I have got at this is again psi x t density plot and this is also psi x 0 density plot this was delta x naught. So, I started with delta x naught, I will check what is going on with delta x t with after the time evolution for t time. So, by definition of full width half max again half of its intensity maximum intensity this is the maximum intensity half of its maximum intensity is obtained. when the x is delta x t by 2 because this is delta x t by 2 this part is delta x t by 2. So, uh, so when x i so I have to plug that in here x value which I get 2 a by pi to the power 1 by half square root of 1 by 1 plus b square e to the power minus 2 a x is going to be delta x t square by 4 divided by 1 plus b square. So, what I have is now minus a delta x t whole square divided by two into one plus b square equals ln 1 minus ln 2 or delta x t whole square equals 2 into 1 plus b square ln 2 divided by a. a we know a has certain value we have already got this a equals 2 ln 2 by delta t sorry delta x naught square. So, we can plug that in and we get finally 2 into 1 plus b square ln 2 delta x naught square divided by 
2 ln 2 or delta x t whole square equals 1 plus b square delta x naught square. And we know that b we have already defined previously b was 2 h cut t a by m. We know a we can plug that in. So, finally, if we insert all these values b value then I get this expression delta x naught square I am skipping few steps here. You can take a look at these steps very easily it is tedious, but it is easy to do 4 h cut square t square 2 ln 2 whole square divided by m square delta x naught square. Or on the other hand I can have I can present it as delta x t is going to be now square root of delta x naught square plus 4 h cut square t square 2 ln 2 whole square divided by m square delta x naught square final expression for the with this delta x t at particular time t. So, what we observe from here is that is that delta x t is proportional to uh, it will depend it is not directly proportional, but it will depend on time. So, more time it spends during the evolution it will just spread out more it is just increasing delta t it will increase the 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 width of the of the of the uh, stationary gaussian so let's say i start i started with this gaussian slowly it will spread out it will more spread out and when it is spreading out its amplitude will go down definitely because total integration has to be 1. So, area under the curve has to be constant. So, its width is slowly increasing and the amplitude will go down. Amplitude going down can also be um, uh, proved because here the amplitude is given by its amplitude is given by this 2a by pi to the power half square root of 1 by 1 plus b square. This part is the amplitude of the wave packet at, at time t and if I plug that in b then I get an expression like this a naught divided by uh, there is an a naught here we can write down 2a by pi to the power half now I plug that in b then I get square root of 1 plus 4 h cut square t square 2 ln 2 whole square divided by m square delta x naught square. What we see here is that amplitude will be inversely proportional with t and width is directly proportional with t. So, as we increase the t amplitude will go down just what we have presented here amplitude will go down slowly 
and its width will slowly increase. So that is the that is the basic idea of a uh, stationary Gaussian wave packet motion. We will um, continue the session and uh, we will see how uh, this uh, wave packet will behave uh, if it is a traveling wave packet. So far we have said that the wave packet which is present uh, is a stationary wave packet. So the wave packet which is staying uh, in a place is not changing it is not changing the position, it is staying at the same position. But if it is staying here as the time progresses it will just spread out and its amplitude will go down that is the behavior of a particle in quantum mechanics. We will meet again in the next session.